really covered Babur. And then I spoke to I had spoken to you about the the Delhi, uh, uh, not the Delhi, the Bahmani Sultanates, the Deccani Sultanates, and then I gave you a, an argument about what are the pillars of the Mughal Empire, how was it sustained? Uh, a figure here of some of the major uh, people, uh, and and this one, some of the you know the six, the six most well-known Mughal emperors. The line does not end with Aurangzeb by any stretch of the imagination. It continues on. Uh, but th with the death of Aurangzeb in 1707, in effect, the Mughal Empire had now passed its zenith. Uh, from hence, henceforth, it was going to enter into a decline. Right. That's uh, uh, and and then we saw, you know, the life of Babur, and this is the point at which we had stopped after having looked at such things as, for example, the place of alcohol, his love of painting, uh, the the attempt to link himself up to the Timurids, uh, you know, his views of India, uh, and this slide is where we had stopped. Uh, this is the Bhage Vafa. Uh, because I was about to describe to you the uh, the love of gardens that Babur had, which is going to be inherited by by uh, 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 you know the rest of the Mughals. Uh, Akbar, for example, is much less interested in gardens. Um, you know, so each of the Mughal emperors has their own strength. Uh, in the case of Akbar, we find uh, obviously apart from the expansion of the empire. Uh, which was his first major task. And, and it's worthwhile reiterating, uh, although I'm certain you haven't forgotten, a point that I'd made last time, uh, and, and I want to repeat it again, namely that keep in mind that the Mughal emperor's foremost task was to continue to expand the empire and certainly consolidate the gains that they had already made. And that we should keep in mind that no matter what else we say about the emperors, their love of poetry or architecture or gardens, uh, whatever the case might be, manuscripts, that first and foremost, war making, okay? Uh, engaging and, and, and battle with adversaries, In, in a different way. Uh, and what happens to arts such as poetry? Because poetry was written to be read, written to be sunk, so to speak. Uh, and that's typically how, so these drinking parties that the Mughals had, there would be recitations of poetry. And I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with the literary scene in India, but, but this is still very common. Right, um, uh, a mahfil, as they call it, a mahfil is where you you get, or a mushaira, a mushaira is where two hundred Urdu poets will appear. I've been to several of these. Uh, they even have them in the diaspora community. Uh, so you know, it's a gathering of. of 100, 200, 300 poets, and then each of them will recite, and they will usually recite from memory, usually, all right? So, you know, how it, Akbar is able to conquer his, his illiteracy is an interesting story in itself. Um, but remember also, because here I have a little note saying that he has a library of 24,000 volumes. You might say to yourself, well, what did he do with 24,000 volumes if he couldn't read? Well, the first thing is that, that many of these manuscripts are illustrated manuscripts. So if he, if he, if, so the Babar Nama, which is, which is what? Babar Nama is the, is the memoir of Akbar's grandfather, right? Babar. And as I had explained to you on a previous occasion, say you have, let's say, a manuscript of the Babar Nama, and you have 100 folios, 100 pages of miniature paintings, and each of these is illustrating some episode mentioned in the Babar Nama. Now, he knows what's in the Babar Nama because it's been read out to him. 
So that he looks at the painting and sees whether the painting goes along with the text or not, right? What is, how does it illustrate the text? Right? So, so yes, he could avail of, of all of these books in his library of 24,000 volumes, all right? So now, uh, why is the reign of Akbar so extraordinarily important, right? So we want to spend a little bit time on that. Um, uh, and uh, what are some of the most notable features for it? So, you know, we have already we have already seen, but let's just go back because I will not repeat this point uh, uh, really too often. Uh, but just so that you know, and uh, that you know, I had mentioned to you that when you look at Babur, uh, Humayun, and all of that, um, and then going all the way to Aurangzeb, what you really see is the expansion of the of the empire over a period of time. So you go back to this map over here, uh, which I'd shown you on the previous occasion. And so here, if you look at the, the legend or the key, so Mughal Empire 1605, what is the importance of 1605? That's the time of the death of Akbar, all right? Uh, so, this is, so this in dark blue is the extent of Babur's empire. And, and under Akbar, 